Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel. Now in this video you're going to learn that how you can use custom environment values to perform sorting in SwiftUI. So let's take a look at a ex small example first. Let's say that I have some sort of a model. All right, so I'm going to create a movie model over here. The movie model consists of ID, which is coming from identifiable, title, and rating. And I have a list of these movies. So I'll create a list inside the content view. And what I want to do is I want to display this list. Well, displaying this list is kind of easy, right? I mean, you can just go through a list over here on the list view, and you can pass in the movies, and you can say movie in, and then for the text view, you can simply display the title of the movie. So movie.title. Okay, so that's all fine, but what if we wanted to sort the movies? So maybe we have a button over here somewhere, and we click on the button, and we want to sort those movies. How can we do that? Well, the first thing would be to create a button. So I can go ahead and utilize for each, wrap everything in for each. I can create a button. Now the button is inside a list, so it might move up and down. If you don't want to do that, you can just create your own list using some other technique. But I'm gonna go ahead and say button, and button will simply say sort, right? Now the button is moving up and down, but we don't really care about the UI right now. Okay, so when we click on sort, we want to sort these movies. In order to sort these movies, I can go ahead and create a private function over here, sort, and I can sort these movies. But what I want to do is I want to use that function everywhere. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can do that. You can create an extension on an array and you can add the sort function on that. You can create a helper file and you can also you know, create a sort function inside that, more like, like a generic sort function if you want. But I also want to inject different ways of sorting. So maybe the content view will be sorting in a different way while some other view will be sorting in a different way. And I also want to kind of like centralize everything. So one of the ways that you can do that is by using environment values. So what I really want to do is end up with something like this. Environment sort var sort. And sort will be a function that we are getting from the environment. It is only available inside uh, the view. Well, it's used inside the view, I guess but it is available everywhere, but it's used inside the view. And this is the way that we want to do it. Why? Well, first of all, it centralizes everything. So you can see that inside of view, if I want any sorting, I can just get the sort function, pass the movies, and then sort the whole thing. And if I want to inject a different sort implementation, I can also do that. So over here, if I go ahead and say sort or environment values, I can go ahead and say sort, and I can pass a different implementation if I want to, like sort, whatever. So how do we implement something like this, the sort environment value? So let's go ahead and get started with that. We'll start with creating the easiest part, which is the sort order. Sort order will simply have ascending order and descending order. You know, just sorting things in ascending or descending. Next, we'll create a struct called sort. And in that, we will have the sort order. So sort order, and if you don't pass it, we'll just initialize it to be ascending. Next, we will implement the call as function, call as function, which allows our struct to be called as a function. And this is one of the common techniques that you use um, when you are creating environment values. Now, when we are using call as function, we want to make sure 
that this is based on the generic type, meaning that it can be movie, but it can be user also. And these things, the properties, will be represented by the key path. So we have to take into account all of those uh, different things. So that's why I'm going to say T comparable, meaning a property that can be compared or a type that can be compared. And we will also pass in U. Now, obviously, these are generic parameters. You can name them anything you want. I'm just calling them T and U. So we are going to be passing in an array of type U, so array of movies or array of users. And we are going to be sorting by the key path. And that key path will be based on U, like, like the movie, and T, meaning the type, the like property name. So that will be title and rating for the movie, but it can be something else depending on what you're passing. And then we will say order. Sort order will simply be sort order. You don't really have to pass in. I mean, it's an optional, and by default, it will be ascending. What is it going to return you? Well, it's going to return you an array of whatever type, like array of movies. So this is kind of like what it looks like. Actually, hold on. I think I make a mistake over here. This will be key path with a capital or uppercase. Uh, here we go. Key path like that. All right. So we need to return something over here. And this is where you will perf be performing the actual comparison. So we will perform switch order. If it is ascending, then we will do something over here. What should we do? Well, we can simply take the array, array of movies or array of customers or users, sorted, and inside over here, now we can actually pass in our condition. All right. So dollar sign zero, which basically means the item of the array and the key path. So we'll say key path, and the key path is already passed to you. It's less than. So because we are doing it in ascending order, and then we're going to do the same thing, but for different key path. I mean, the same key path, but on a different location in the array. So that will be our ascending. And for descending, it's going to be the same thing, but instead of less than, it will be greater than. There we go. So this is our small function that now we can use. Now, this is a sort struct. And if I want to expose this as an environment value, I can easily create an extension and I can call it environment environment values and create an entry. So this is a new in iOS uh, 18 and Xcode 16 that you can use entry and it will write all the default code for you. So it becomes a little bit nicer. I don't have to create environment key and all that stuff. I can just say entry and you may be able to see what it does actually if I expand the macro. See that? So it's basically generating all of this different code which you were writing before. All right. So we were writing this code before but now we can just use entry and it's going to automatically write this stuff that we were writing before Xcode 16 and iOS 18. All right. So this looks pretty good. And now I should be able to actually use it. In order to use it, we need to inject it. So I'm going to go over here and I'll say environment, key path, sort. And over here, now I can inject something. And this is kind of like up to you, whatever you want to inject. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and inject like sort. That's it. But you can modify this um, and you know inject different variations of it if you want. Now it's injected, so I can actually access it in my content view. And once I have this, now I should be good to uh, perform sorting. When we press the sort button, we can change the sort order. So we will need another state variable that has the sort order right there. And Instead of saying sort, probably we can change this title, right? So we can say over here, um, sort order 
if it is equals to ascending, then we will just say ascending or else we will say descending. All right, so that's just the title of the button that we're changing. Um, when you click on the button, when you tap on the button, if it's ascending, we'll change to descending. If it's descending, we'll change to ascending. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna use one line of code, this tenary operator, which is going to check if it's ascending, then set to descending, if it's descending, set to ascending, and so on. All right. Okay, so that's good, but the movies are still not sorted. I mean, if I click on this button, you can see that it is changing from descending to ascending, and that's all good, but these movies are still not really getting changed, right? So what we can do is, we can do it e either over here, that is fine. I mean, if you want to do it over here, we can call the sort function over here, uh, pass in the movies, pass in the keypad that how you want to sort them. So by what? By title, I guess, okay. And pass in the sort order. So pass in the sort order. Okay. And now we can sort it. You can see that we are able to sort it. Pretty cool, right? Now, if I wanted to sort by rating, I can simply say rating. And probably it would be a good idea to also display the rating. So let me go ahead and add a rating over here. I'm gonna just say movie, uh, probably have to use like this, movie.rating and spacer. Okay, so 8.6, whatever, you can format it in a different way, I guess. Um, but now it's displaying and it's going to be sorting by rating. So nine is on the top, 8.7, 8.6, and now in ascending order. So we can also sort by rating, all right? So this is a good technique because if you ever want to use this in a different screen, you can. You can just get it from the environment, the sort function, and then you can simply sort. And if you want to write some unit test for this, you should be able to do that also, all right? So pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, also remember, you do need to inject the environment or else you will not be able to access the environment value. So make sure that you inject it. And I think this is going to really simplify your code uh, whenever you need some sort of an operation like a, you know, sorting in the view, you can use these techniques. Now keep in mind there are other techniques also as I mentioned earlier on, uh, which means that those techniques are like you can create an extension on an array uh, you can create a helper file and put all of this stuff. So those are also available, all right? But I think this technique allows you to kind of like centralize all of these things because remember there are other environment values that you deal with, including dismiss, and then there is a colored scheme and all that stuff. So kind of like grouping them into an environment, all right? So hopefully you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to check out my courses, then simply go to azamsharp.school. Azamsharp.school hosts one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Simply click on the courses and you can see all the different courses that are available. This is the current course that I'm working on. It's a really good course. It's over 10 hours long right now and, and I'm still working on it. And this is where you will become a full stack iOS developer where you can create your app in SIF UI, where you can create your backend with ExpressJS, Node.js, and Postgres database. So this is a real deal. Uh, apart from that, if you want to learn about SIF UI architecture, I have course on that. If you want to learn about Vapor, like creating full stack iOS application using SIF UI and Vapor, I have a course on that. Swift UI, super base course, you know, Swift data, building a complete reminders app, there are tons and tons and tons of courses out there. And if you want to start with something free, you can go ahead and check out this Surf UI Fundamentals course. This is completely free. You can go ahead and register for it and enjoy the course, all right? So thank you so much and hope you that you enjoy these videos and hope that you enjoy these courses.